Tell dear friends, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We've been saying it all day, but now we can say it without guilt, perhaps. <laughs> I want to tell you a little story about something that happened on this date in 1914. On that date, uh, something both ordinary and extraordinary happened. Soldiers who were fighting in World War I stopped fighting just for a little while. That's the ordinary part. They, they stopped to celebrate Christmas. The extraordinary part was that it was Germans and British soldiers doing this together. They came up out of their trenches, they met in the middle someplace, and they observed Christmas with singing and football games and whatever else they may have done, exchanging food and cigarettes and the things that soldiers do. Now, this was not something that the higher-ups had any particular interest in or control over, and in fact, they reacted pretty strongly to it. Uh, there were immediate orders this should not continue, and in subsequent years, there were advanced measures taken to ensure that it didn't happen again. But just for that one time, something rather extraordinary happened. Certainly not for the first time. We should know that all through history, the saying, rich man's war, poor man's fight, has been fairly common among soldiers and has led soldiers to do things similar to this. This one just happens to be more recent in a much more familiar way to us, perhaps, people we could even imagine having known. Now, down through the decades since then, this has been sentimentalized in popular culture, in movies and books and songs and everywhere else you can think of. Uh, but more recent scholarship suggests that in reality, it wasn't all that sentimental. In fact, it was a subversive gesture. These soldiers were reacting to the power of this world in the only way that they could by temporarily laying down their arms and not going at each other. It seems like a pretty good summary of what's going on tonight as we come to this place again. Christmas is, in many ways, God's subversive act. As the world sleeps, God acts. Not for the first time. There have been any number of guerrilla actions by God along the way, messing with the world's power, messing with the world's war machine. Just this morning on the first Sunday of Advent, we heard the prophet Nathan slowing the King, King David down as he was talking about building a temple, saying, no, 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 that's not what God wants you to do, that, that's for somebody else, reminding David of his place and the limits of his power. God has tried this along the way, but here we get a truly inspired action by God, coming in the form of a baby, a baby which is God's and nature's hand grenade. I said at four o'clock today in another context, talking about the baptisms we have here, had here on December the 10th. There were two children baptized, one was six, the other was six months. The six-month-old child screamed through most of the service. You couldn't miss this child. This child was going to get whatever he needed if he had to keep on screaming all day. A baby will alter your plans. A baby will ensure that you pay attention. That is what God does on this night. God is sure to get our attention. And God does it where it actually truly counts. Going back for a second to World War I, you may, may know that at the beginning of it, there was a famous statement by Sir Edward Grey, who was the British foreign minister at the time. Um, the lamps are going out all over Europe and will not be lighted again in our lifetime. I think I've got the words almost right. But he was saying that from the comfort of his office in the foreign office in Whitehall, not standing knee-deep in mud in a trench. Tonight, God comes to the place where we would least expect. God bypasses palaces altogether. Not just the literal palaces that we can imagine, but also, dear friends, the palaces of our own devices and desires. God lets the poor in on this first. Shepherds and stable hands and the sort of people who loiter and us in our least glamorous moments, perhaps. We too are there and able to see what this thing is that God is doing. Now, I think, is the time 
to take up the challenge. Now is the time to look around and see who, for us, is the enemy and reconcile. Now is the time to come out of the trench. It, it's really uncomfortable and unpleasant there anyway. Why do we stay? Whatever the trench may be for you and for me, whatever the misery is that we hold on to, whatever the lack of hope it is that we cling to, even though it's not in our interest, whatever it is that we continue to fight, now is the time to lay it down. Reconcile and take up together God's work of subverting the power of this world. There is no limit to the number of targets, dear friends. All we have to do is look around us and find where it is that the power of this world is profiting from our inability to get over the differences that we hold on to so closely. So, dear friends, come out of the trench. Stop and be still just for a moment. Listen. I think you can already hear Stille Nacht coming from the other side. Amen. <laughs>